would you think if a charity that was supposed to be protecting kids from all sorts of horrors actually was issuing guidelines about how could kids could be abused, mistreated and killed, but in a way that they thought was good. Would you think either you or the world had gone bonkers? Substitute using and abusing animals for using and abusing kids and you're looking at what the RSPCA, whose 200th anniversary is this month, is doing with its RSPCA Farm Assured Scheme. This is not my personal view, but the result of a massive investigation by Animal Rising they did 60 investigations into 45 so-called assured farms and expert assessors concluded that in many cases the farms not only failed to meet the RSPCA criteria but didn't even achieve the legal standard for animal welfare. Altogether they alleged 280 legal breaches and I'm reading from a piece that George Monbiot in The Guardian wrote about this. Looking at the whole sort of RSPCA situation as somebody who's done a lot of outreach and who is consistently sort of, you know, I'm consistently astonished really at the reactions of ordinary people and their concept. They really buy into, they had a good life, you know, they seem to think that Animals in factory farms in the UK are in some sense better off than they would be anywhere else. It seems to absolutely beg a belief, but then when you go onto the RSPCA website, you see the PR push of this view promoted and pushed out by the RSPCA, who are supposedly the guardians of animals. So. On the RSPCA website they say things like our vision is a world where all animals are respected and treated with kindness and compassion and crikey you know I could certainly sign up for that I think yeah right absolutely what is, are their core beliefs they say animals lives are important in themselves animals have emotions feelings and need crikey is this not the ve this is this something on the vegan society no it's the rspca then they say all of us can and should help make animals lives better well that sounds like a vegan activist site doesn't it it doesn't really sound like a site that's endorsing the use and abuse of millions of sentient beings on an annual basis like the RSPCA is. Now the RSPCA gets a measly £5 million per year for this uh, so-called farm assured uh, setup which is kind of a bit of a drop in the ocean. The RSPCA income is around about £147 million £147 million a year which is, I would say, quite a lot. Their chief executive is paid in the region of £162,000 a year. I mean, it's not small beer. Everywhere you go on the RSPCA website, there's like, donate, 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 you know, one of those sort of things. They, they've even got a little section on their website, which is a help an animal in need. So it says, if you're worried about an animal, you're in the right place. Obviously they mean in the right place unless that animal is on some sort of like mega farm, in which case you're not on the right, in the right place. It says the RSPCA has been rescuing animal victims of cruelty and neglect. It's a job no other charity does. Well, actually, I think, you know, like the gazillions of like, you know, wildlife charities rescuing hedgehogs, you name it, cats, dogs, you know, there's 
Whenever, there's gazillions of other charities who try and rescue and take care and sanctuaries. But they say, is rescuing animal victims of cruelty and neglect is a job no other charity does, so our specially trained team will always prioritise it. But we care about all animals and know you do too. This is clearly written from the PR point of view and it's factually incorrect. Then, just just to clarify, I mean, I was this was a bit that I found mind blowing. What is animal cruelty or neglect? They say helpfully. Right, cruelty is where a person is deliberately causing an animal to suffer, e.g., physically harming them. What you mean, like they do on mega farms and fish farms? stuffing chickens into cages where you endure and they're, they're, they're you know they get pecked to death we all we've all seen the horrors you know then there's the sort of like there but the thing is these animals are all going to be tortured to death so i mean that is is that not is that not cruelty that you're going to torture an animal to death and you're raising them in horrific conditions just to torture them to death i mean you know have i lost the plot or am i not earning what was it 146 million pounds a year and begging for volunteers. Then they say, well, what is neglect? Neglect is where a person is causing an animal to suffer by not providing everything they need to be well. Oh, crikey. Tell that to the salmon in factory farms whose eyes are being rubbed out because of they're so closely confined and some of whom seem to be boiled alive by the delicing heating procedures. You read this stuff and the stuff that Monbio is going on about and that Animal Rising was going on about, about this breaking um, investigation. And no wonder the average punter on the street is actually very, very confused. Because most ordinary people don't spend a lot of time thinking about, they, you know, but they, we've got our lives to get on with. Unless you're an animal activist, you're not going to be sort of like really agonised. You want to believe, don't you? You know, everybody wants to believe that the world is how they hope it will be, especially if it means that they don't have to be inconvenienced. So obviously the average punter who's raised from sort of like childhood with fairy tales of these beautiful farms where the cows let down their milk and nobody gets slaughtered because that's not part of the paradigm they just waft away and then whatever 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 you've got your organic this and your grass fed that and then there's all the farming lobby saying yeah 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 this is saving the planet the cows love it you know blah 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 best lives possible no wonder people are confused it, no wonder people are like, yeah, well, you know, it's grass fed, you know, it had a good life. They believe this sh schlock because we have been conditioned to believe this schlock. So what does Monbiot make, make of this? He points out that the RSPCA has now ceased taking animal abusers to court directly, which is interesting. The last report, the last of its private prosecutions, which was in 2019, that's like five years ago, um, documents its pursuit of people whose pets have been left in filthy squalid conditions, wounds or illnesses untreated, without sufficient access to food, water or clean bedding. In other words, it pursues exactly the abuses that have been reported from its own assured farms, but on a much smaller scale. Just as the RSPCA, says Monbiot, noisily rescues pets from neglectful owners, the animal rising investigators felt obliged to rescue pigs from the RSPCA's assured farms. He says that they only mentioned in this 2019 report two prosecutions of two tiny small holdings. It says nothing about investigating or prosecuting large commercial livestock operations. Mistreat animals because you can't cope and the result is media outrage and a severe penalty. Do it for meat and profit on an industrial scale and you'll be left to get on with it. 
What is the RSPCA for, says Monbiot, if instead of challenging the astonishing double standards that govern our relationship with animals, it reinforces them? Well said, George Monbiot. Well said. I'll put the uh, link to the piece um, in, the, in the comments. And then he says, it gets worse. Until the new report, this is the Animal Rising report, was published at the weekend, at which point it deleted them, the RSPCA's website carried recipes for meat, animal body parts, and fish, aquatic animal body parts, showing how you could cook cuts of the animals that receive its stamp of approval. Of 159 recipes on its site, only four were plant-based. Stand back and marvel at the perversity. Right on, George. It's as if a children's welfare charity had published a directory showing where you can hire child labour. Now, Animal Rising, quoted by Monbiot, describes the assured scheme as a marketing arm of the intensive animal agriculture industry. Well, yes, that's part of it, isn't it? I mean, there's so much marketing that goes on with animal agriculture. Uh, this is just part of it. The RSPCA's advertisements show animals leading blissful outdoor lives while being cuddled and petted by the farmer. Yeah, right. Now, all of us activists know, and most of us vegans know, that that is just a total fantasy. This is the RSPCA. What was that about animal cruelty? Deliberately causing an animal to suffer, e.g. physically harming them. Oh, that would be like sticking a bolt in their head and slitting their throat, wouldn't it? Would it? I think it would be. It invites primary school children to thank a farmer for raising pigs for slaughter. What is this if not promoting the industry? I'm, I'm with you there, George. I see, says George, and I agree. The RSPCA as normalising and legitimising animal suffering on an industrial scale. So what are we to do about this? As vegans, we need to talk to people, we need to act, we need to be active, we need to continually call out these horrific things. And well done Animal Rising for this uh, project. It's a, I think it's a good one. Some people might argue that the RSPCA is only welfare is to start off with. But the thing is, it's, it's such a whole household name. It's such a brand. I think it's really a good way of leveraging to some sort of reality into the conversation. So, yep, thumbs up to Animal Rising. Thumbs up to George Mombio. And thumbs up to you. Don't be afraid to pet the like and push the pet the subscribe button too if you want to if you gain value from this as i said i'll link the uh, george monbio piece in the uh, comments you take care and good luck with uh, your activism peace